Hi everyone, this is Mike from We Build Stuff. This video is outlining a build log for a bar top arcade system using the Raspberry Pi. I've used the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. This video will be concentrating mostly on the cabinet build and the wiring for the Raspberry Pi. I will be creating a separate video of installing and configuring the Recall Box operating system later in the future. There's also notes and instructions on the screen during the video as well, so you can go back and rewatch if needed. So I start off with a piece of 4x8 MDF, half an inch is good enough for my build. Some people will use 3 quarter inch for the larger cabinets. Uh, smaller cabinet size I find half inch is plenty. So I was very fortunate to have a great panel cutting table saw. Uh, for doing this it made the job a lot easier. Uh, here, here's a quick bit of cutting out the side panels. So I try to save as much material as possible, uh, reuse and stuff, that's just a personal philosophy. Uh, here you see me doing a template. I downloaded this template off instructables.com. I'll put a link in the description. I've modified it a little bit to work for me, but I'll also uh, I'll put out some information about mine. So I uh, nail both pieces together. I just find that's a much easier way to cut them out so that they are the exact same. Hold it together with finishing nails, and then I'll be cutting it out on the bandsaw. So easiest way to do curves, Start with your relief cuts on the bit on the bandsaw. Um, this way you don't have to worry about pieces binding or your blade getting jammed or stuck halfway through. You might notice I look like I'm working really fast. Everything's in fast motion, otherwise this would probably be a three hour long video. All these small blocks, I uh, had some scrap pine from old 2x4s kicking around, so I ripped those up into uh, 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch uh, dimensions, and I just set the lengths based on where they would fit within the panel. I use a brad nailer, usually uh, 1 inch to 1 and an eighth is long enough. If you use too long of brad nails, they'll pop through the other side, and then you got to file them off. And you'll see that where I made a mistake later on. Um, I should have used the, uh, <laughs> the router prior to putting the box on, but I guess I just wasn't thinking that day when I've done this clip. Smooth it over. One of my later builds, I'll probably use uh, plastic T-molding. Um, it'll make it look way nicer. Uh, here's me setting up the main control panel. Um, I'm going to have six buttons for each player, plus three that are going to be in the front. That'll add for start, select, and a hotkey. I like to drill pilot holes before I drill my larger holes. Uh, I use a 1 and 1 8 inch Forstner bit. A lot of holes to drill, so just keep watching. So one of the most important parts of this project, you start by installing everything when it's square, otherwise it's going to end up wobbling. So I take a lot of time uh, setting it up before I put on my bottom piece and my top piece. That'll be the main box of the cabinet. Everything else I can add on and make little changes to later. So I use proper wood glue, brad nails from every direction that I can possibly nail them in for strength. Out pretty good. So far I have yet to have any of these fall apart or need repairs to the actual cabinet that I saw. One quick safety tip. Never put your hand on the other side of where the brad nailer or any kind of nail gun is going uh, so you don't pop through and end up in your finger. Now I put these angle cuts on here. Um, things fit nicer if you download my plans. You'll see why the angles are needed. Much cleaner looking build. 
I'm drilling holes, I'm going to be using bolts to hold everything together. I use these T-nuts that are going to be embedded into the pine. The T-nuts are a number 10 national course. They will match up with my one inch long number 10 national course bolts. I like to use the flathead. It allows it to sit flush on the control panel. Oh man, I look so fast. I countersink the top of the control panel so that the machine bolts, basically so they sit flush. They're not going to be bumping my hand uh, during extended times of gameplay. It just looks a little bit nicer. So I'm just doing, doing a quick test fit, make sure everything fits nice, see if I have to do any trimming. But I think everything worked out pretty well for this one. Good fit. I'll eventually be gluing those two pieces together so that they can come off together as one big unit. Uh, next up, I didn't picture it all here, is building the surround for what's going to be holding my screen in place. Uh, I cut out the four pieces and then I used a dado blade to uh, basically router out those spots. The dado is just much quicker and it enabled me to build that in about 10 minutes. You'll see in a later video where I build one that is not glued on at all. That enables me to take it on and off if I want to do a monitor swap or something that's completely different sizes um, or do some other custom work later. Good idea to wipe up any glue that uh, seeps out ahead of time, um, otherwise it's a real pain to try to chip or sand off, uh, especially with MDF, that stuff will just fall apart on you compared to using real wood. So I get it all as nice and clean as I can to allow paint to uh, stick to it better when I paint the cabinet eventually. So ignore all the giant drips, I do clean those off, I can't remember if I filmed that or not. see the opening will show only the screen whereas the uh, three-quarter inch dado that goes around each side will hide the uh, rest of the monitor so you won't actually be able to tell that it's a computer monitor while it's in there. I used some extra strong uh, wood so I used oak, nice hardwood uh, behind it just to make sure there's no flex or any issues it'll help support the monitor and it'll also help me attach my brackets to it later which you'll see me build in a moment fingers, make sure I'm not putting it behind the nailer, or the brad nailer. Never hurts to have a lot of nails holding everything together. So there's lots of different ways to see this. I've seen a lot of different people on YouTube making videos doing these. Uh, I made this method up myself. It worked out very well. Alright, so here you see me making the brackets. These will be holding the monitor in place. Very quick and simple. Again, just built out of scraps that I had sitting around. I believe these ones are pine. These are essentially going to be clamps that are going to clamp the monitor right to that surround piece that I built. Sand them out, even though you're not going to see them. I like to make everything look nice and rounded. Drill some holes, countersink them, because I'll be using flathead bolts again. Not that it really matters. You can use any kind of bolts or screws as long as they hold it together. You'll see that really shortly. Just doing a quick test fit before I actually put the monitor in, make sure that everything fits in place. You'll see a close up later of what it looks like. So I've got my holes pre-drilled, put the monitor on, put the brackets in place. So rather than using uh, the visa mounts, this just clamps them in. It's going to save me a lot of space in there and I don't have to spend any other money for a custom clamp. I've seen people put a 2x4 behind it with four big bolts to attach to. That works as well. I just find this is nice and lightweight, gives me a lot of space inside the cabinet. So here's my other design. This one is able to be taken on and off completely, uh, you know, in a, with a matter of just undoing four bolts and it'll come off the, the cabinet. Again, very similar bracket system that holds everything in place. Scrap wood kicking around. Fits perfect. Very clean.
All right, for the back side, I start with one giant piece. It's just easier to cut it out uh, the original rather than ripping it three times afterwards. Uh, the very back piece, I ended up using our CNC router, carving a big mushroom in the back. You'll see me painting that later. Uh, the very top piece, I make a little handle so it's really easy to carry the cabinet when it's done. When it's all finished, I'd say it's probably about 40 to 50 pounds. I've never actually officially weighed anything, uh, but this makes it much easier. Smooth it out since I'll be using my hands to be carrying this. I don't want any jagged edges cutting me open. It fits beautifully. This back piece with the CNC cutouts. Uh, you can get these hinges, I get them at Home Depot. It's about five bucks. They come in all sorts of colors. I didn't actually end up using that power cable, but you'll see later. Uh, this is installing a lock system, so it's really easy to open up the back and close it when it's done. I needed to make a slightly bigger hole for the nut that goes on the back, so I just drilled halfway through the material, and it fits perfect. So you can get those kits for about $9 at Home Depot. Very easy, just don't lose your keys. Attaching the bottom, because that's going to be taking the brunt of the weight when you're opening the back. Perfect fit. Here's a little trick if you're doing some carving and you want to get two different colors. Paint it and then just paint over everything else. I just use acrylic paint I got at the dollar store for this. Uh, I probably would have used uh, different paints if I was to do this again because it's kind of dulled a little bit. It's not as uh, glossy as I would have liked. So for the control panel I start by measuring out the joystick plate. Um, that way I know where the holes are going to go, I make sure everything's straight. You don't want your joystick being installed crooked. These holes again are big enough for a number 10 bolt to go through. So I like to do a test fit, make sure everything works. Excellent. Good fit. And I still need to countersink those so that those uh, flathead bolts don't, uh, don't hit your hands. Uh, next I'm using putty. I'm filling up every little basic scratch or hole in the uh, cabinet. That way everything's seamless. It'll be hidden by paint. Now for the wires, uh, for this one I was using a Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, there's 40 headers that come off the Raspberry Pi, those are the GPIO, and I'll put a link in the description for where you actually install those. For my operating system, I'm going to be using Recallbox. There's a website where you can download an image. It's extremely easy to use. Other people have used other versions of RetroPi, an emulation station, and it had to do a lot of programming. This one's very simple and I can get it up and running in 30 minutes. For all my wires, I use Quick Connects. They easily attach to the micro switches. And I try to color code things when I can to make it easier. Um, so they come very on and, on and off very easily. Uh, these ones are kind of ugly. Uh, you can get proper DuPont connectors to make those look nicer. But I went the cheap route. So total of, I, I actually haven't counted how many buttons there are, or how many wires there are, but I try to keep them nicely managed. Uh, these ones will all be connected to the positive of each micro switch. And later you're going to see me using a daisy chain, a big long white cable that's going to connect every single one together and it'd be attached to the negative uh, header on the Raspberry Pi. Doing a quick button test, make sure everything fits nicely before I install micro switches. These nuts, I just hand tighten them and I use a little wrench. You can buy proper wrenches for doing it. So install all my micro switches, make sure. The, uh, where my quick connects are, are easy to get on. I want to make sure there's easy access for the wires because eventually there's going to be so many wires in here it gets really, really messy. For attaching my joysticks, I use a washer, lock washer, and a nut. Get those on there. I end up using a wrench to actually tighten the balls on there tight enough so that they don't fall off. Uh, with enough use, things do come loose. Everything's nice and tight, time to install wires. So I've labeled each of my wires so that I know exactly where they're going. It makes it way quicker. Sometimes it's easier to take your micro switch off and connect it and then reinstall it, but it depends on there. I had to bend a couple of those little tabs out to make it fit, uh, but nothing's fallen off yet. You can even solder things on if you have to. Nice thing about quick connects, if something breaks, pull it off, put it on a new one. Uh, you can see my daisy chained white cable.
so lots and lots of wires. So you can tape everything down or use zap straps to make it look nicer inside, but it's going to be hidden. So here's a quick test. I'd already programmed it at this point, just threw in my micro SD card. Here's a quick uh, section I'm putting a reset button on my Pi. Uh, so I just have to solder on two small headers to the Pi. I always hate soldering on the Pi's just in case something goes wrong because, you know, they're expensive, uh, relatively speaking, for, to do in a school. Uh, so two wires add to another micro switch, and this button will act as a reset button that I will install on the exterior of the cabinet. So hole drilled, same size, install my micro switch. Carefully install my panel so that the wires don't get crunched in there. And I'll do a quick test. And it works. Now after making a reset button on one of them, I had to go and add it to all my other machines because I didn't have them. So I used acrylic that I had sitting around in the shop for uh, covering my monitor. It makes it look the color is way more vibrant as well as protecting the screen. Uh, you can use plexiglass, uh, you can get them pre-cut at certain stores. I just did it myself with a table saw. A lot of chips everywhere, you gotta be really careful that it doesn't crack. Uh, for speakers, I just pulled apart some old Logitech speakers, grabbed the, uh, the drivers from those, wired them up, hid the wires down inside the cabinet, and connected to a small amp I got on eBay. So here's the power, got monitor, Raspberry Pi power, and power for the audio amp, and that is right over here. So this is just a 12 volt audio amp I got on eBay, a couple bucks. It's not the greatest, but it works. And just drill a little hole for the volume potentiometer. I mount my Pi in there instead of letting it sit loose with some small white L brackets. Uh, there was, again, cheap on eBay. I use a Wi-Fi adapter for all my file transfer. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 does not need a Wi-Fi adapter because it has it built in. Uh, this enables me not to have to open up the cabinet, take out the SD card, load games onto it that way. I can do it all wirelessly once it has been programmed correctly. The only time I open it up now is if I want to hook up a keyboard. So three cables, that's all you need to plug into here. Audio, the HDMI to DVI cable because my monitor uses a DVI input. And then my power. Make sure you get the right power adapter, um, otherwise it if you underpower your Pi, it's can just bad things happen. You could corrupt your SD card or it could just turn off randomly for the heat. I've never had that happen. So I have a massive mess of wires in here, um, but miraculously, I do know where everything is. Here's a look from inside the black arcade that I painted. Um, just different speakers. I used a different amp. That cost me about $30. Uh, I've seen them on eBay for about 10 And here's my yellow arcade. This one has LED buttons. So that means there's even more wires in it. So that's a Raspberry Pi 3, that's what I held up my fingers. Um, so even more wires that go on the inside of this one. Each button requires two extra wires, again, for positive and negative of the LED. There's my reset button and the audio amp again. Uh, I found these audio amps, the problem with them is the wires can fall out very easily. They're not clamped in there that great. Here's a quick visual of the CNC uh, cutout that we did. I'll show a little clip of that after. We used a vinyl cutter to make labels for them. May not be the prettiest, some people like to use big uh, graphics and stuff. I don't, because I didn't have any money for that. I used the little fan grills that I got at an electronics store to cover the speakers so people wouldn't stab them with pencils. So congratulations, you made it through my entire video, a whole uh, 20 minutes long here. Just a couple clips of people playing them. I've rented them out to parties, to have a lot of fun with friends, and even my own children love playing with these. They are pretty easy to use. Quick clip, there's our vinyl cutter that we used. Here's my CNC uh, that we used to do the side panel. This took a, probably about one hour to do each side. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content as it is created. I plan on making a follow-up video concentrating on the programming, how I set up everything using the Recall Box operating system, and getting all the buttons working. So download all the plans in the links below. Leave a comment, share the video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to measure twice, cut once, cheers.